Hey, I'm going to talk about Tile Mill by a company called Mapbox right now. If you go to mapbox.com slash Tile Mill, you will be able to download Tile Mill for either Mac, Linux, or Windows. It's pretty easy to install for any of those. And once you do, you'll be able to use Tile Mill to easily make um, tiles for online maps and share those relatively easily also. So why don't you go ahead and download Tile Mill and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. Okay, so when you open Tile Mill, you come to this page, which is the projects page. And right now there's not a ton right here. You should have at least these four. And these are examples created by Mapbox that come along with your installation, and I'm just going to open one of them. You can see this is Washington, D.C., and it's it's tiles that you would put on your map, and you can see that the streets get more detailed as I zoom in, and the labels get bigger, and there are more labels as I zoom in, um, just as you would expect with any base layer for an interactive map. You can also see the legend off here to the side, and you can see the Cardo CSS on the right. We talked about Cardo CSS in a previous video, so I'm not going to talk too much about how it works today. Okay, so why don't we create a new project? I'm going to call mine uh, Berlin test. And add it. OK. So when you create a project by default, it has the country outlines. And that's kind of it. And these countries are, I believe, just the country outlines from Natural Earth. I'm going to delete that right now. And we'll confirm that. And so, just to be clear, this is the layers area. Um, this is where you add and delete and edit layers. You see that nothing changed, and that's because I haven't saved it yet. When I go up here and click Save, then all my countries are gone, and I can delete the countries from the Cardo CSS, because I'm not going to need that. Um, the map shouldn't change here. Uh, you can see that all we really have is the background color for the map. And that color also happens to be down here. If you want a handy color picker, this is your place. Um, you can see that the color changed as soon as I picked it. Okay, that's not terribly useful on its own. Why don't we download some data? And in this case, I'm going to download OpenStreetMap data. And I'm going to do that using Metro Extracts. Those are at metro.texno, T-E-C-Z-N-O.com. -E and these are OpenStreetMap extracts for mostly for urban areas, as um, the name suggests, but also for uh, particular regions that people are interested in. So <clears throat> as the name of my project suggests, I'm going to scroll down here and find Berlin under Europe. I'm going to click that. And in this case, we want the fourth option here. It's the OSM to PGSQL shapefiles. That's, there's something technical about that name that I don't think I should describe right now. But trust me, it's going to take a few seconds to download. Um, so I'm going to pause while it does. Okay, so I downloaded this and it looks like this. It is three different shapefiles. Might be easier to see this way. Um, you see that there are line shapefiles point shapefiles and polygon shapefiles. That's a limitation of shapefiles as a format. They um, can only have one type of geometry in each one. 
OpenStreetMap contains all of these and another type of geometry. So uh, when you download OpenStreetMap data for an area, you're going to get all three kinds, and it has to split those into three different shapefiles. Um, I'm going to open the line shapefile in QGIS, just so we can get an idea of what that looks like. All right, it's a lot of data, right? The, uh, Germany is very well mapped in OpenStreetMap, so I'm not surprised that Berlin is extremely well mapped. Mostly what I'm interested in showing you right now is the attribute table for this. So I'm going to open the attribute table for the line shapefile. And this is probably going to take a second. All right, so now you can see um, you can see all of the features. There are tons of them, tons and tons. I'm not going to scroll through them too much in this case. Um, and you can see the columns as you scroll to the right. These are not all of the attributes that exist in OpenStreetMap, but these are the ones that are packaged up nicely for you. If you need other OpenStreetMap data, there are definitely ways to get it, but they aren't nearly as easy as just downloading a shapefile from the Metro Extracts website. So um, I recommend trying the Metro Extracts first, otherwise um, you'll have to dig through some documentation to figure out how to get the rest. But it's, it's, it's not that bad. In this case, um, since we want a base layer, we are going to be most interested in the highway column. And you can learn more about what's in the highway column by going to the OpenStreetMap wiki. That is at wiki.openstreetmap.org. And I'm going to search in the top right for a highway. Okay, so there are a number of values that you might find in the highway. The most important roads are tagged highway equals primary, and then you have highway equal, equals secondary, tertiary, etc. Um, when you are um, when you're mapping and when you're trying to emphasize certain roads and over others, you'll want to roughly go in this order that is here on the wiki. Okay, back to the tile mill. So I'm going to add a layer and find the file that I just downloaded. It's in, in my case, it's in downloads um, here. And then I want to find the line shape file. In this case, you want the file that ends in .shp. You don't necessarily want the whole zipped up thing. And once I click done, I have an ID in here. I want to make it descriptive. I'll call it Berlin lines in this case. And I'm going to just click save. And nothing changes because there's still no styles over here in the Cardo CSS. So I have to add some. And remember, um, those start with pound sign and then the name of the layer. And then the curly braces on either side. And then within here, I'm going to say um, line width one and the line color black. Okay, so I saved and nothing changed, but that's probably because I can't see the area that I'm looking for. Uh, down here in the layers picker, there's a magnifying glass and that is zoomed to extent. And hopefully we'll have better luck. Yeah, that looks much better. Okay, so this is a bit of a nest of roads, 
right? So perhaps what we really want is to experiment with different values of the highway tag. And the way you would do that is by referring back here to the highway page on the wiki. Maybe let's say just highway equals motorway we want to see. So if I come back here and in my condition say highway equals motorway and save it. Now we just see the few uh, very large roads called motorways. Okay, so there, there we have just the motorways, right? Maybe we want the motorways to be a bit thicker. And maybe we want the inside of the motorways to be a slightly different color to give them a nicer look. Uh, the way you would do that, and this is something I haven't covered in the other video, so this is going to be new, is um, you almost, you in a way, create another layer which tells TileMill to draw the same layer twice. And there are two ways you can do it, but I'm going to do it the simpler way, which is within this statement. And when you're doing this, when you're telling TileMill to draw your layer twice, you do that by prefixing it with two colons, and then you give it a name. And it doesn't matter what the name is, so make it something, um, something kind of that makes sense that you'll be able to read later. So I'm going to call mine road filler, say. And I'll give that a width. of three, and then a color. Let's just go with blue for now. And when I save it, you can see that I have blue lines that are outlined in black, right? Maybe I want the blue to be a little bit less emphasized, so I'll, I'll turn it down to two. Maybe I want it even less than that, than the one. Okay, so so now we have the motorways, and remember this happens first. We give those motorways a width of five, a color black, and that gets drawn, and then Tyrell Mill comes back through and draws it all over again with this rule, this road filler, and. It when it does that, the line only has a width of one, and then it has a color of blue. Okay. So, so from here, there are lots of things you could do, obviously. You could copy these, and then say, I want to, I'll go back to the wiki and say, okay, let's get trunks and primary roads, too. So, high equals trunk. Um, I'll hit save, and we should see a few more, um, I think. And if you're not sure, one way to check would be to comment this out. You comment it out by starting it with a slash, a backslash and an asterisk, and then ending it with the opposite, so an asterisk and a backslash. And when I hit save, some of them should, did disappear, right? Um, so those are the trunk highways, and I'm going to save it again so we should see them again. And then I'm going to add a comma, and then do the same thing with primary. Now we have a lot more roads. Okay. And from here, I assume we'll probably want our these to be not as pronounced as the motorway. So I'll make my these a little bit thinner. You can see that they are now pretty easily differentiated from the motorways. Um, 
I would probably want them to have a different color. Um, and I'm not making necessarily a beautiful map in this case, but I want to illustrate how this would work. Um, hopefully, hopefully you're getting the idea. Um, and remember, I'm doing, in this case, I'm saying, look at Berlin lines. Um, if the highway column, if the highway attribute in the Berlin lines table is trunk or primary for a given feature, then draw that with width 3 and color black and then go ahead and draw it again with width 1 and color orange. Okay, So now my background color is kind of driving me insane, so I'm just going to set it to white. Um, okay, and then, then it's kind of up to you to say um, maybe you only want to show the other highways as you zoom in further. So we're at zoom 9, that's 10. Maybe when you get down to 10, you want to start seeing more. So I'm going to say zoom greater than or equal to 10. And then I'm going to copy this again, because I'm lazy. I'm going to tab this over just to make it clear that it's inside this zoom rule. And then I'll pick the rest of these. So I want secondary, tertiary, and so on. So secondary, tertiary, unclassified residential service. And I'm going to separate these all by commas because I don't feel like styling them all differently. If you wanted to, you probably would want to if you were making a nice set of tiles to use. Um, but I'm just doing this to demonstrate it for you. Service is the last one. And I'll hit, um, I'll just make these one and not give them a fill. So I'll delete the fill and I'll hit save. And remember, this doesn't change anything because we're at zoom nine. Uh, but if I zoom in one level, I'm going to get a lot more roads, right? And it's really crowded. So it looks like there are some gaps such as here, that seem kind of surprising. I assume there are links that we're missing, so you'd have to add those if if you want the motorway link to be the same color as the motorway. Perhaps you want to do it like this, add a comma, say Berlin lines, highway equals motorway link. underscore link and hit save and look we have on ramps now similarly you might want to do the same thing with trunk and primary and again I'll be lazy about it copy paste trunk link primary link and hit save and we should see more on-ramps here, um, specifically around here. I think it wasn't quite as obvious before. Okay, so that's it's an okay map, I guess. Um, I think the big thing, the big obvious thing that we're missing here is labels. 
and to do labels you'll want to draw the roads once again um, you'll want to draw the roads once again so in this case I'm going to go to the motorway and motorway link and add my two colons and say road label and make an entirely new rule here and now so lines are pretty easy to style but text we haven't really done so I'm going to go to the documentation and that is at mapbox.com slash cardo slash api slash 2.1.0 and specifically you want to look for the text section and um, you should get to a section of the page that looks like this. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so the most, one of the more important attributes here is the text name, and that is the actual label that's going to get used. And in this case, we want to look back at our table, and the table you can see by clicking on this table icon. And you'll see all of the columns available. And we want to scroll over and find one that would be good for labels. In this case, I believe the name is going to be good for labels. So I'm going to add a text name attribute. And in square brackets, I'm going to say name. OK, so we also have to define the size of that text here. So text size, let's make it really big for now. And a text face name. You can see a list of available text faces down here. The letter A, I'm going to click it, and you can see all of these. Um, often you see something like deja vu sans. I'm going to copy it and add it here. This text face name. And in quotes. Okay. That might be enough. I'm going to hit save. And you can see that I have these labels, but they're kind of they're hard to read because they're black and some of the other lines are black and they don't follow the root of the line. So there are some things we can do about that. I'm going to scroll through here a bit. There are a bunch of uh, typography attributes that you can change. Um, so here's, here's what we really want. We want the text halo. So the default is white, which sounds good for what we're doing, but we want to add a radius. So text halo radius. Text halo radius. I'll say five. And it should be, yeah, that's nice and legible. Maybe make it even smaller so we don't have this huge bubble around it. Yeah, that's starting to look pretty good. It's pretty readable. Um, so there should be a text orientation. That's um, if you wanted to specify the degrees, like the angle at which you want the text to show up. But we don't have a simple angle that we want all of it to show up. What we actually want is this text placement. Um, so this uh, is defaults to point, so it's just putting it kind of in the middle of the road or the segment. In this case, we want it to be line, and that should be better. So text placement line. I'm going to hit save, and they should start orienting with the roads. Um, I see that some of them disappeared here, and it's probably, be, probably because they were going to be overlapping. Um, One thing you can do is say 
allow overlap. So text allow overlap. And say true. Um, that didn't do it for that one, unfortunately. One thing we could do is make the text size a bit smaller. Say 15. Okay. Uh, we see a new label that just showed up here. What's something else we could do? We could change the placement type. So this will try to reposition the labels to make them fit. Let's say text placement type. Simple. Mm, doesn't seem to have made a difference in this case. And at some point, there's a chance that you're just not going to get it to fit the way you want it to. And labels can be complicated this way. But maybe if we scroll in, we'll start to see the label because it will have room. Yeah, so now we can see it here. Um, and maybe we just want to get rid of the allow overlap. And now we only have one of them rather than have two, which seems to make more sense to me. Okay, so now we have labels. We have basic labels for motorways. Probably, if you were making this into a base map that would be used online, you'd probably want to add labels for other roads once you got down far enough. You wouldn't want them to be available way back here. It would be really ugly. Um, but that's a judgment call and a design decision. Okay, so now we have kind of a, it's a basic, pretty ugly map of Berlin. Um, we could also add points from the points shapefile here. I'm going to skip that. We could also add the polygons for buildings. I'm also going to skip that for now. Actually, why don't we add the buildings really quickly? So remember, you browse, find your file, polygons. Click done. I'm going to give it an ID Berlin Polygons. Save it. Remember, nothing changes because we're not styling it yet. Down here, I'm going to say Berlin Lines. And I just want the buildings. So I'm, And I know that there's a buildings column, a building column. So I'm going to say building not equal, sorry, to empty quotes. And I'm going to give it a polygon fill of, let's say, green for now. <clears throat> Oops, I said polygon lines. I want polygons. I'm going to hit save. And this should be, yeah, pretty dramatic. It looks like buildings are pretty well mapped in OpenStreetMap in Berlin. And you could add labels to these if you wanted to for the addresses or the names of the buildings. Um, everything, most of the things that you would think of doing with lines and points, you could also do with polygons. Um, you can see that there are some features missing here, like water, I believe. Um, Mm -hmm. And there is a property in Cardo CSS that I think is pretty fun. It's um, scrolling down, building height. So this is interesting. It renders buildings in 3D. So if you give this a building fill instead of a polygon fill and say building height of, I don't know, 10, and hit save. Whoa, that's way too big. OK, I'm going to make them a bit smaller and save it again. Whoa, 
that's not working at all. That's crazy. I've never had it happen that way to me before. I'm trying to zoom out to see if that fixes things, but it is doing a lot of work because I am doing something, clearly doing something wrong. Um, so I'm actually going to change it back to Polygon Fill, but if you get a chance and want to play with polygons, buildings rather, give it a shot, um, but I'm not going to mess with that right now. So okay, I changed it back to polygon fill, that looks a lot better. Um, my computer is still catching up with the mess I just put it through. Alright, so say we were happy with this base layer, I'm absolutely not happy with it, but this is kind of good enough for now, right? and I want to put this online and use it. So um, there are two things I need to do. First I need to go to this wrench, click the wrench, and um, we see this big empty area. What we need is to restrict the area to just the area we want to be available as tiles. We don't want the whole world to be available. We just want Berlin because that's all we are interested in here. So I'm going to scroll scroll down into it and try to get this bounding box as tight as I can. Again it's it's taking it's, it's doing a lot of work right now, so you might have similar problems. Um, okay, that looks much better. And I'm going to draw my bounding box right around Berlin. Maybe even a little bit tighter so that it's not... it doesn't get ugly at the edges. Okay, and okay. Probably we'd never want people to be zoomed out this far. Let's say they have to be at least zoom 9. And then we click the center that we want our map to have once we're at one of the uh, acceptable zoom levels. So we click there, and you can see that it has a Z9. That means the center and original zoom when somebody loads this is going to be Z9. And then give it a name. I'm going to call it Berlin Test. I'm not going to bother with the rest for now. Um, the really, 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 really important thing to do is to set the zoom levels. Remember, we started at zoom level 9. And we don't want to go down to 22. Let's make it just a few zoom levels, say 9 to 12. And as we change this, it tells us how many tiles that's going to render. So Tile Mill creates tiles that your web mapping library can use, or a service like CardoDB can use as a background layer. Um, so it's actually going to create those images when we ask it to. And so in this case, it's going to create 867 images for a meg's worth. If we just bump this up to 13, it's going to quadruple the number of tiles and say over a meg. But if we go down to 22, it's going to get so large, uh, almost 800 million images and well over 100 gigs. Um, I don't think I have 100 gigs of space either on my computer or Mapbox's servers. So I'm going to make it much smaller, much more reasonable. You need to watch this. If this is too high, it's either um, going to crash or take forever, or you're just going to be very confused about why your map is not working. 
Okay, so that's all you need to save. You need to zoom in, find your da data, draw a box around it, and then click the center at the at the zoom level, in this case zoom level 9, that you want to start at. You need to do those two things, and then you need to set the zoom levels right here. If you don't, you're going to have all kinds of problems. Alright, so I'm clicking save. And the nice thing about that is now when I go back to my projects, remember before we only had six projects here, we have a new one called Berlin Test. And when I open it, it's going to start me out at zoom level 9 and the center that I picked earlier. And I don't have to scroll in and find my data all over again. That's really nice. Um, OK, so once you're ready to export your tiles, you go here to the Export button. And I would go to Upload. And if you didn't have your account set up with TileMill, you'd have to do that here. Um, in my case, I already have mine set up, so I'm not going to change it. These settings are all of the ones that I already set up, so I don't have to do it again. I'm just going to go ahead and click Upload. And then it takes me to this page that shows me uh, the job that I asked it to do. and. It says that it has about nine minutes remaining. I'd be surprised if it actually takes that long. But in this case, I am going to pause it just in case it does take that long. And I'll be back in a second. OK, so that did take a couple of minutes. Only a minute and a half, actually. Um, so once it uploads, you can see this button turn to view, and I'm going to click it. And it's going to take me online to the tiles that I just made. And you can see they act exactly the way that we had them set up. They look very similar to the ones that we had set up. And you can also see up here is the zoom level. You can see that that goes only to 9 only as low as 9, and only up to 12, because those are, those are the zooms that we set up. Um, again, so that is roughly how you can import OpenStreetMap data into TileMill and create base maps to use on your interactive maps. Um, once you do this, you can use them in other services, and mostly you're going to be interested in this part of the URL. 